Men don't like loud women. Women don't even like men! And guess what? Bubblegum bubblegum in a dish, half these men have shrimp dicks. I'm not worried about it, bitch. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. When you were a young kid, more than likely, especially if you were you're a young man, a boy, when you were playing with your friends, you'd maybe jump bicycles or maybe you jumped or rode skateboard or maybe you just did, I don't know, active, silly things with your friends. And almost all groups had at least one guy that was the, oh yeah, watch this guy. So you'd do something, someone else would do something, they'd say, oh, that's really cool. And you had that one friend that had to be the center of attention to, to be the most popular and the coolest kid who would always say, oh, yeah, watch this. They inevitably did something stupid or hurt themselves or got stitches. Needless to say, I've had a lot of stitches. <laughs> I was probably one of those, oh, yeah, watch this, guys. Um, and then as you get older, it kind of evol it evolves into the, oh, yeah, hold my beer. Those are the guys that as adults, they're still the, oh yeah, watch this. Except this time they're sipping, sipping a beverage with their friends and they say, oh yeah, watch this, hold my beer. And that's where the hold my beers guys came from. They're the guys you see the videos of doing stupid things and getting really hurt. I realized after watching so many of these videos, women are saying, ladies, here's what guys want. Ladies do this, men love it. Ladies do that. And guys are like, what is going on? We don't like any of this stuff. You guys have gone crazy. And what it is, is it's women turning to other women and saying, hold my beer. The difference is they're doing it on TikTok where all it is is a bunch of other women doing the same things. And this is where you get the videos. I don't have one for you, but this is where you get a, a video of someone having a bag of Cheetos. This is one I saw last night, I, I swear. Someone had a bag of fiery hot Cheetos and they pour it into boiling water until it makes like this sauce. And then they take pasta noodles and mix it in there and they put it in a frying pan and they put ground beef in there. And as I'm watching this, I'm like, what, what is going on? And it's who can out crazy the other people to get attention. That's the hold my beer for crazy ladies on TikTok. And then after they do all these things, they say, well, it's what men want. Men asked us, men wanted us to do this. And it's not true. We men are, are saying, please stop doing this. And an, uh, another video I have that I didn't download tonight, because I'll be honest with you, there's so many videos out there. For every 100 I see, I put 10 in a video. Or for every 50, I put five. I'm just overloaded with the craziness. So I can't show it to you, to, or show all of them to you each video, or it'd be a four hour long video. But, but the video in, that, I, that I kind of have in question is a, a woman was walking around interviewing other women, and they were black women, and they were saying, do, do black men like BBLs, which is the Brazilian butt lifts? Every woman she asked was like, yeah, they love them. Yep, 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 yep. And I might have put this in a video a while ago. I don't remember. And then the, the same interviewer asked guys, and like, no, nah, man, just natural. Like, we don't need all that. Just just be a natural girl. So it shows you that the women have, the women are talking to other women and thinking that's what men want. And the men are like, we, we're really not interested in that. It shows you the bifurcation. The hold my beer guys usually end up breaking a leg or getting hurt or stitches or in some cases breaking their neck. And they learn their lesson very quickly. But the, the watch my TikTok women, which is the same as the hold my beer guys, they don't learn anything. Because all the other women are like, yeah, you go, girl. And there's no lesson to be learned until, until the ladies start doing Botox, until the ladies get divorced, until they're a single mom, until no one wants them and they've hit the wall. That's when the reality comes crashing home. In many ways, the hold my beer guys have it better because they broke, break their leg or they did something stupid and they learn. Where these women don't learn until 10 or 20 years down the road until it's too late. The first video I have from you is, I almost thought about doing this as an individual video because this is a woman virtue signaling to other women that this is what you should have in expectations of your husband. Now, she calls them a partner. I've even slipped into this vernacular of calling someone a partner. You have a partner in business. 
You have a husband, you have a wife, you have a boyfriend, you have a girlfriend. I don't like partner because partners are friends, partners are buddies, partners are coworkers. At least that's how it always sounds to me. So when someone says the word partner a lot, an equal partner, I just start getting visions of, I don't know, LDHD TV people and, and lefties that don't really love each other. So she's got the nose ring. She's 35. And as you watch, watch this, I, I want you to think in your mind, if you had, if you had a, a girlfriend or a wife or whatever like this, let me know what you think after hearing this, and I'll, I'll see if you agree with me. I have an equal partner. I don't have to make him a list. I have an equal partner. I don't have to ask him to help with things around the house. I have an equal partner. He knows how to shop at the grocery store without pictures. I have an equal partner. He doesn't expect me to handle everything alone. I have an equal partner. He plans date nights without me having to beg for it. I have an equal partner. He does his own laundry. I have an equal partner. He makes his own appointments. I have an equal partner. My stocking has never been empty. I have an equal partner. He makes the kids lunches in the morning. I have an equal partner. He makes and takes their son to his therapy appointments. I have an equal partner. He doesn't believe that just because he goes to work, he shouldn't have to do anything when he gets home. I have an equal partner. He takes genuine interest in me and my interests. I have an equal partner. He knows how to fold towels. I have an equal partner. He takes our kids to bed and knows their teachers' names. I have an equal partner. He doesn't make me feel bad if I'm not in the mood. I have an equal partner. He acknowledges and appreciates what I do and tells me that often. I have an equal partner. He does basic adult tasks without being asked. Throughout this whole thing, I don't like these, by the way, when they have to repeat the, the initial line 500 times. We get it. We're not stupid. Just say, I have an equal partner, and he does all these things. Although at one point, he, she says, there, which I, I thought was interesting, uh, takes their son right here. He makes and takes their son to his therapy appointments. That's the part that's really telling to me at least, is number one, the pronoun there instead of his. But through the rest of it, she uses his. Um, and interestingly enough, the kid's going to therapy appointments, and this doesn't look to be that old a woman, so I would expect that he's not. So it's his son and also their kids. So he has a previous relationship and the kid's in therapy. And after listening to everything that she said, that, well, we he does this and he does this and he does this. At the end of it, even if she did all the things that he did, when she says, oh, he knows how to fold the towel and I fold my towels and he does his own laundry and I do my own laundry and he knows what to buy at the grocery store without pictures insulting other men, obviously. And, and I do the same thing. At the end of this, my whole thought was, well, then who needs you? Who, who need, what, what are you bringing that is different? Because if you just say friendship and the occasional starfish missionary once a week, I got news for you. It's a lot cheaper to be a single guy and just go date a professional or hook up or visit Rosie Palm and her five sisters. What's the point? What is the point? And so when these videos go, go viral, other women see it and they say, well, this is what I expect from my man. This is what I expect to be happy. This is what I, this is what I want in my relationship. And when it never comes to fruition, because most men are not like this, she says, I deserve better. And they start venturing out into the world alone. And I actually have a video that I'm going to bring up here uh, that, that expresses this very well. When when women don't bring anything unique or special or interesting to the table other than I'm just like him except I'm female and so we can occasionally sleep together, what's the point? What, 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 how are you adding to a man's life? If we're all going to be the same, I'll be honest with you. It's not hard for me to cook dinner and then cook it for two people. I don't mind doing that. I'm a pretty good cook, I, I at least think, when I tend to put the effort into it. But when, you, when I have to do my laundry and do this and go shopping and fold the laundry, and then that literally means the only thing you're bringing to the table is the bedroom fun and your personality and, and hanging out. Well, I don't know about you, but she didn't sound like she had the most fun personality. 
And if you're getting – and she says he respects me if, if I say I don't want it. If, if you're bringing up already in a relationship, he respects the fact that when I say no, I'm just not in the mood, and he respects that. Well, that means that's been a conversation. That means that's come up in the relationship. So already we're having problems. The next one I'm going to play is, is this gal right here. She, she experienced what we guys often refer to as ghosting. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was on the dating apps, I'd say for every 10 matches I got, and this is going back several, several years ago when things were much different, for every 10 matches I got, I might get two or three conversations, maybe even four or five, and they would be one or two words, and then they would just die on the vine, or they wouldn't go anywhere, they'd stop responding. And maybe one or two out of 20 would actually be going on a date, meeting up, and getting to know each other. Now I think for most average men, it's probably one in a 50 or one in a 100 if you even get any matches at all. So when she experiences what we guys get all the time, Miss, uh, I, I, I used her on the thumbnail with clown makeup because she's a clown because she experiences what men experience hundreds of times, thousands of times, but she gets it once and she feels she has to lecture all men on how to behave on the dating apps. Men, you need to stop going on dating apps if you're not actually wanting to date. I sent a text at like noon asking when I was going to see him again. And he's like, I'm busy. Can we talk later? We know it's coming. Eight hours later, I get the audio message. I, you know, I just don't know if I'm ready to date, you know, but you're really super cool and it's not you. I know it's not me. I am cool. I'm emotionally available. I'm hilarious. I'm a blast in a glass and that glass can be full of water or whatever you want it to be. I am a fun time. I'm going to pause there for a second. She says, when can we see each other again to him in a text? That means they've seen each other once. And she is a ton of fun. I am a good time. I guarantee you what happened. Listen to the rest of this and then I'll share it at the end. I think many of you already know what happened. And you know it and I know it. But why are you on a dating app? It's not me. It is 100% the men. <laughs> Get off the dating apps. Oh, my God. And he's like, well, I just want to get your temperature of where you're at. Why does it matter where I'm at? You're telling me your needs. I will respect that. If you don't want to date, fine. What's the point of me telling you how I feel about the situation if you're telling me you don't want to date? No reason to go any further than that. Except for me to maybe tell you to get off the dating app. And the crazy thing is, is that I actually like this one. Oh well. Here I go again. <laughs> the reason why I used her, put clown makeup and her on the cover is because she said, I actually like this one. Here we go again. It's happened before, obviously. What happened? They met up. She really liked him. She was attracted to him. She slept with him. And then he's like, I got what I needed. I'm good. Bye. And out he went. And this happens over and over. And then women are like, I'm shocked. What's going on? But she says she's emotionally available. Well, on TikTok, here she is just a, a, a few, I don't know, maybe a month or so before this. And she's crying because she heard her ex husband and hers song somewhere, grocery store or something or other. Now, if you're shopping and there's a song that you got married to and you hear it and you start tearing up and getting sad, you're not over your ex. And what's the most delicious, interesting, and fascinating point about this in this six minute and 22 second video that I will not be playing for you because I put myself through the punishment so you don't have to, 
is she says she grew tired of the relationship. Uh, they were on different pages. And she divorced him. And now she is a single mother of two. And he is mad at her because he didn't want to get divorced, but she decided it was over. And then a month or two later, she's on the dating apps, getting her back blown out, you know, sleeping with other guys, having fun, saying she's emotionally available. These guys are probably figuring out either A, she's not emotionally available, or B, uh, she's a single mother of two, but we're on this date. She looks decent enough tonight if I have a few more drinks, and I think she's good to go. She's DTF. And so they go hook up. And then the guy's like, got what I needed, but I'm certainly not going to date a single mom of two. And out he rolls. And she'll do it over and over and over again because the men that she finds attractive and the men that she likes and the men that give her the tingles are the ones that are going to sleep with her in bail. The boring guy that's probably a little heavy set, maybe thinning on the top of his head and he wears kind of thicker glasses or something or other, but he's got a good job and he hasn't had a lot of experience in the dating world. That's the guy that says, I will take you on as a single mom and I'll provide for you. But you know what? You're kind of pretty and you're kind of hot and I, I, want, I want to sleep with you and I want to live with you and I want to have you uh, be in my life. And she goes, ew, no, <laughs> not you. You're not my type. And she's and so she puts out this video and she's blaming the men. Get off the dating apps if you don't want to date. But what about all the guys that are on there that do want to date that never get an opportunity? Guys, what about all the women you've contacted and messaged on a dating app? You never get anything back. Or you ask them, you try to come up with a funny intro and they're like, yeah, hey, so... Hey, what do you think? How's work? What do you do for a living? Tell me something about yourself. Uh, I'm good. Crickets. It's like, it's like pulling a car up a mountain on your back. But see, when she experiences it, she puts it out there. Ladies, how about you too? And the ladies are like, oh, you want to hear about my bad story? Hold my beer. And they share all their crazy stories. And all these women go out there and blame these bad men, and it's the same men over and over again. But there's no lesson. See, again, the hold my beer guys, they would learn a lesson after doing this a few times because they have scars or bandages or a broken leg. She doesn't get it because the damage isn't immediate. The pain, the mistake isn't seen immediately. It's seen after she's beyond her dating years to when she's single and alone, and guys are like, yeah, I just wanted to sleep with you. You left all the good men behind. In the past, this worked to some degree because the guys that got left behind said, I never had an opportunity when I was younger. And so now I will take this risk. The difference is men are finding out today that the single moms and even the women that are in their young 30s or mid 30s that usually kind of be questionable for guys, these guys are finding out, oh, not only are you aged a little bit, but you are also have kids or you also have a high body count or you also like wine a bottle of wine every night of the week and you got some baggage and the, the men that used to maybe even make that sacrifice and say well i'll try it i'll try it now what they're doing is they're dipping and then they're dipping out they're dipping their wick and then they're dipping out or they're saying no you gave your best years to somebody else i'm not interested anymore and, and, and if you look at, uh, I have her TikTok here, and, I, and I'm just putting this out there. You guys are really good about, I've never gotten any backlash about anybody going and commenting on, because I, uh, uh, I don't even have a TikTok account. So please don't go and, and give the, you know, any of these profiles a hard time. If you look, what is it? It's her and her and her, and she's talking about her hair, and she's talking about dating, and she's talking about, her job and dancing around to Backstreet Boys and she's she's performing in her own movie. And interestingly enough, a lot of people have said, and I've, I've heard this multiple times, they signed up for TikTok and they put out a video or two and very quickly, very quickly after they put their profile out and just make a couple of posts, they have a large number of likes and comments. And what I find interesting is that they haven't really, and, and they found this interesting too. They didn't really put out that great a content or anything crazy. 
what I think's happening is people TikTok to get people to post on TikTok versus Twitter versus Facebook is if you put all this crap on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, people would probably not pay attention to you and you'd go years with only 17 followers. I, and I'm, this is, I don't have any hard data to prove this, but again, other people have said this kind of happens. I have a feeling a lot of these are bots. And so, because if you look, here's a video with a thousand views. Here's one with 1300 views. And in the middle, here's one with 55,000. I think these are the actual views, but the ones that get big, big numbers, they're the ones that trend viral. Those are probably real views, but the rest of these that have 700 or 500 views are probably just a bunch of bots. Because if I go back to the very first appointment right here, I'm afraid of my nail tech, 524 views. How many times do you just join social media and get a zillion views right off the, well, I mean, 500 views is a lot of views. I did my first, I think my first, in my first year of, of YouTube, I was very excited when I crossed 100 viewers on a, on a video. Like, wow, this one video got 100 people to look at it. I was blown away. I'd also been on YouTube six months. By the time I, I had enough viewers uh, to actually like monetize my channel and start getting ads shown, it had been a year just to get 4,000 hours worth of views. And I think it was at the time 1,000 subscribers. It took me a year. But you're going to tell me, you know, in the first couple of posts, you're getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of views. I think it's all fake. So not only is, is she holding my beard for doing crazy things, because but the, th the, the craziest part about this, I think she's doing it for a bunch of bots. I think she's going, putting through all this effort to be popular to bots. That's just my opinion on it. Um, this is another one that, and, and some of these don't always necessarily fit the same thing, theme. But these are ones that when I put them together, I'm like, I told you guys, I told you this is happening. I told you this is what women are doing. And they're destroying themselves to impress or to show off other women or, or to be like a gotcha. And then they give out horrible advice and other women listen to it. I don't know if this is an Instagram influencer or what she is, but she's saying the quiet part out loud. I told you guys, that women are out there today, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm the only one that says this. I'm sure a lot of other content creators are telling you guys this. But we're telling you women are, are sleeping around and giving it up to, to the bad boys and having a good time. But if you meet her on a dating app or you ask for her number in the coffee shop, she's going to pretend to be the good girl so that you think she has value. And and so what it reminds me of almost is like uh, if you've ever seen that little picture of Homer Simpson uh, back in The Simpsons where he's standing there with his arms on his hips and, and Marge has walked into the bedroom and she says, wow, you're looking slim and, and fit and really good. And in the meantime, behind him, he's got all these clips and things grabbing onto his fat to pull it behind him so he can't see it. I know that's kind of an obscure reference, or but it's like it's like putting on a, a paint job on a car and, and polishing the outside and cleaning it really well, and then you open the hood and there's not even an engine in there, right? Same kind of concept, which is she's putting her best foot forward, making you think, wow, this is this is a good quality catch. But in the meantime, she's absolute trash on the inside. How come oh you'll give it to a whack dude before and then make a good guy wait? I don't think that you're trying to make the good guy wait. I think that you want him to see the value in you. Sometimes I'm like, all right, if I give it to him too, too soon, he's gonna think, you know, like I'm not a good girl or there's no, like, you know, I'm just a quick, easy F or whatever. And I think that's sometimes what women will do. They'll 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 make the guy that they really like wait longer because that's who they really like see potential in. I might see a husband in you. And just like men, like see certain women like, oh, she's wife material or, you know, she's just somebody I'm going to smash. I think women are able to do that as well. Like, you know, oh, you know, he, he's got a lot of good qualities. He got some good stuff going for himself. You know, I'm just, you know, let me see how it goes. Let me make. What she says here is pretty, pretty key. I think F or whatever. Let me, and I let me, let me mute this. This is pretty key. She says right here, um, he's going to, so why does she let some guys smash? 
And then why does she make other guys wait? And she says, here, I make him wait because if I do it too soon, he's going to think, you know, like I'm not a good girl or there's no um, – I'm just a quiz, quick and easy F. But you are a quick and easy F. You are not a good girl. You are a hua. You're a smash and dash. And so what she does is, is she lets the guys that she knows, hey, he doesn't have his things. Like he doesn't have money. He doesn't have a career. He doesn't have a house. He doesn't have the fancy car. He doesn't have all the sevens that I want or all the sixes that I want, but he's hot. So I'm going to smash him anyway, even though he doesn't have anything that it, other than being hot and I want him to smash. So he smashes. But then when she meets a guy that's got resources and maybe he's got some money, he's got some game and he's got something going on, she says, I'm going to make him wait to trick him into thinking that I'm a good girl when really I'm not. But I'm going to fool him. And then he thinks he's dating a, a good catch, like that I'm a respectable girl. I've had this happen to me. Ironically, I had a girl that was not uh, that I dated that was not a good person. And she fooled me. And I thought she was a good person. In the meantime, she was a hua. And so these women are fooling people, going out and having all their fun. And then they come forward and say, I'm a good girl. You need to respect me and treat me like the princess I am. Except they're not a princess. They are no princess. And she admits it. She makes the guy she wants to date long term, wait for it. But the guy she sees no value in, they just smash. That's a problem. And, and again, men are catching on to this. But because she's out there putting these videos out and doing this content, other women go, huh, you know, that's kind of a good idea. I never really thought about doing that. So when I'm making the guy that I really like that's got all the options and everything, while I make him wait, I'll still get my fun behind my back. Now, I've talked about this in videos going back years, years from the, um, from the feminist uh, – posts that were on Reddit where women are saying, dude, go go get smashed, make the nice guy wait. And and when you're all hot and worked up and you want to go get some, go get some on the side. Don't let him know. But keep dating him and making him wait. That's that's absolutely backwards. But because they are doing this and she puts this out there, any man that dates her now should know. Uh same thing with this lady. Well, not quite same thing, but Again, the hold my beer and the 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 emotional damage. I don't even know if I have that on my keyboard anymore. The emotional damage. This comes years and years later. Women are seeing other influencers talking about keeping looking young and staying young, and that you know men don't want you after you're 25 or 30. Men don't want you anymore because you've quote unquote hit the wall. This information is getting out there. So women, in their infinite wisdom, because they're absolute clowns, in their infinite wisdom, instead of saying, I'm going to find a good man when I'm in my 20s, I'm going to find that right guy for me while I'm in my 20s, give him my best years, and then as, as we age together and he loves me, we have a family together, and he starts earning more money, is more successful, then I get his best years when I'm not at my best years. See, that would be a good lesson to take away. What do women take away instead? Okay, men do not want anybody that looks over 30. I'm going to start while I'm super young putting fillers and Botox and, and getting the, the lip injections to give me these big puffy lips like women see these guys because these guys will look at, I don't know, some Only Fools content creator or they look at somebody uh, that's, you know, ass for days and boobies hanging out and she's got these big lips on them, not realizing the guys are looking at her purely as a physical, like, man, I bet she could suck a golf ball. Hold on. I know I got that one. Uh, yeah, I'll bet you could suck a golf ball through a garden hose. They're looking at her like that. They're saying, yeah, I bet she could suck. And and these women are like, oh, so these guys like those puffy lips and they like no wrinkles and they wa I want to make sure to look young. And they're going through all these hoops at 22, not realizing that a guy looks at her, he's like, yeah, okay, you got the boobs, the implants, and the BBL, and the XYZ, and the fake, okay. Yeah, you, you look like an F doll. That's awesome. I'd totally F you. And she's like, yeah, but would you date me or want to be my girlfriend? Hell no, you look horrible. <laughs> and women don't understand that. that, that you, you, but 
they've also gone so crazy with it that now they're becoming a cartoon of what women actually are. And I got to tell you, the way everything's going right now, if you're like me, I see a picture like this. And if I can't hear a voice, if I can't see the Adam's apple, but I go, wow, that's a lot of filler and work. I start wondering, is Sherry really Steve? Like, did Steve become Sherry? And there's a lot of work to fool me. Now, usually once you hear the voice, you go, okay, I got this. But now the work's getting good enough where your eyes can trick you with makeup and everything else. You got to hear the voice. Then, and then you know. She did this at 22. Let me start the beginning here. Respectfully, you look like you're pushing 45. Stop getting filler or Botox, whatever you have. It looks so bad. 45? I get like, okay, maybe like late 20s, 30s. It's the lips for me. The lips are just horrible. 22, yeah. She's 22. Shocker. When I first started TikTok and... There it is. There it is. When I first started TikTok, hold my beer. I'm seeing all these other influencers doing crazy things. Started making filler videos, like come get filler with me or Botox. I used to get these hate comments all the time. There's just people on TikTok that absolutely hate cosmetic procedures. So she's on TikTok making these videos, getting the fake likes. Maybe she's getting some real likes. The, the likes and she's getting the affirmation of, oh, wow, I want to know more about this. And she says, well, I don't need any right now. I, I, like, I think Botox you get every six months or something like that. I don't know. I don't know that much about it. But I think you get it like every six months or so. And so she's like, well, I got to do a video a month. Okay, I'll do my forehead. Okay, I'll do the wrinkles around my eyes for my next video. All right, I'll do my lips. I'll do my lips again. I'll go back. Maybe I'll do my cheeks. I'll do. And you start running out of content. If you guys notice, like I haven't put out a video in several days. It's because I take some time to look at everything and gather up some information because I used to pound out videos day after day after day, sometimes two a day. There were days I was even doing three videos a day. And I would probably do a video on each one of these segments. But I realized, number one, 10 minute videos are kind of kind of annoying because by the time you get started on them, they're, o they're over. And if you're working out in the gym or driving, you got to fiddle with your phone to get the next one. So I'm putting out less. And a lot of this stuff is like, I've already talked about this. Like, I don't want to bore you guys with saying the same story over and over and over again, because that's how you become irrelevant. People just go, ah, I know the stick. I know the, I know the shtick. I know the story. I'm done with this. And then all of a sudden you're not relevant anymore. So I try not to, to, you know, bore everybody and I try to have a topic or something interesting to talk about. Sometimes that means maybe you go a few days without talking about anything. Sometimes it means you got a lot of stuff to talk about. But when you're doing filler and you're doing body mod, and you're doing other stuff like that, you run out of content real quick. And all of a sudden, now she's looking like Bozo the Clown. And believe that you shouldn't get them. And again, I think it's a personal preference. Like oh, this is the other thing I was going to say. Um, she's got people telling her, stop, don't do this, please stop. And she says, oh, you get haters and trolls and people that don't, we're trying to save you from looking like Frankenstein. But because she gets the, the, the obligatory other women going, girl, you look great. Oh, you're so beautiful. And oh, with your makeup on, you look like, I don't know, a cartoon version of yourself. But I'm sure if she does the makeup just right, she's going to look like, so, I don't know, some anime, big lipped, big eyed thing, whatever. And she's getting the affirmation. So then if 50 or 60 or 70% say, girl, you're beautiful. And 30% are like, please stop. Like you're turning into Frankenstein. Hold my beer. I'm going to get another procedure. And now she's learning like, hey, you look, you look like a 45 year old that's trying to look like a 22 year old instead of, uh, instead of a 22 year old. Like if I want to get filler, I feel like no one should stop you from getting filler because it's your own face. But people always told me that I look older and I get it. I look older. I might act older. Um, a 45. And before I used to cry over these comments and used to delete them and block the account. But now I'm just like, I just laugh at it because I know it's not true. <laughs> um, but I do respect your opinion. I know it's not true. 
Do you know what it is? It's the stiffness around her cheeks. It's the big puffy lips. It's the forehead that doesn't move. She has that like porcelain face that is what 45 year olds do to, tr they freeze everything to take the wrinkles out and try to, to look young. She has the same thing going on now. See, see how right here, like her, just everything looks very unnatural. And people are like, please stop. You look horrible. Stop it. And she says, I block you. I block them. I mute them and block them. These are people that are trying to help her. But she says, hold my beer. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep diving into this madness. And she's going to keep going. And by 30, she'll look 50. Because she'll have so much plastic in her that no one will believe her real age. As a matter of fact, when I found this, um, when I found this, on Twitter, there were a lot of people, mostly women, that were saying, I'm really having a hard time believing she's 22. She probably is 45, trying to look like 22, and she's just passing it off. But here's the thing. Now you don't know. Now, one of the interests, like her neck doesn't have that 45-year-old wrinkly thing going on. Uh, but, may, but maybe she got that worked on there, too. Hold my beer. I'm going to just keep going and doing what I'm doing. But... But without, I, I think th they'd be better if they broke their bones and got the scars now because they're doing so much damage, so much damage. Um, here's another one. This gal s is stalked a guy. And when I say stalked a guy, I mean like was really creepy stalking a guy. She can get away with it though because she's kind of cute. And like if a really good looking guy stalked a woman, I think most women would be like, that's awesome. He's really into me. That's kind of hot. Well, it's the same way for guys, unfortunately. If, if she's kind of cute and he's a single guy and she stalks the living heck out of him, uh, he's probably like, hey, this is, this is not a bad deal. I'll, I'll take it. Listen, but n now, ethics aside, if you were unattractive and you did this, straight to jail, straight to jail. But, it, but if you're good looking, you can get away with this. It does show you the double standard of how people treat. Because if she were a big old, big old something, something that wasn't good looking uh, and she went through all this, people would be like, you're crazy. But because she actually got a date with a guy. I saw this really cute guy at the grocery store the other day. So naturally, I followed him to the checkout counter. And when he gave the cashier his credit card, I peeped it to see what his name was. And then I Googled him and found his social media profiles, and I was able to tell that he was single. <laughs> I'll let this play, but the part I, I laugh about is she goes, I peeped this guy, so naturally, I followed him and then looked at his credit card to see what his name was, naturally. Who doesn't do that? I mean, and then I stalked him on social media, and I, I'm naturally, I mean, come on. So I went through his friends list and I found his mother's page. And then I looked through his mother's page and I saw that she was a member of this book club that's in my area. So I sent a request to join the book club. So I went to the book club meeting and I met his mom there and we bonded over some books that we both liked. And she just thought I was so nice. And I brought it up randomly in conversation that I was single. And she let me know that she had a son that was single also that lived in the area. And maybe it would be cool for us to get together and chat sometime. So I gave her my number, which she gave to her son. And this morning he texted me and asked if I'd like to get together this weekend and do something. So I guess we're going to go on a date. I'm really excited. My brothers. My brothers in Christ. I'm going to tell you something. She's already, if, you, if she goes through all that, which is way too much, getting to know your mother and book club, and that is some creepy, creepy stuff right there. If she goes through with all that, and so obviously she's like going to be really into him because she's invested, even though he's not invested in her, she's going to offer the booty. If, if I'm him, he's probably in a young, single you know, relatively cute girl. He's going to be like, wow, I have a random phone number from this girl in my mom's book club. I'm going to tap that. I'm going to tap that. And then he, the next morning he's going to wake up and his rabbit is going to be boiled in a pot. If you ever watched, uh, uh, what was that old movie? Uh, was it? Oh, it was with Glenn Close. I don't even remember now. It was Glenn Close. Where she went? Psycho. Like boiled his rabbit and stuff. Uh, affair, something or other. <laughs> I remember the movie. I don't remember the damn name. Shows you how much I pay attention to Hollywood. 
Fatal Attraction. That's it. Fatal Attraction. If you ever watch that movie. It's the same thing. He's going to be like, oh, just some girl from my mom's book club. Um, she had to get mom's number. He's going to tap it. Dude, he's going to wake up. His nuts are going to be on a jar on the shelf. He's going to, he's, he's going to get ended when he's sleeping if he doesn't treat this girl right. But because it's a girl, everybody's like, oh, that's cute. I would love to be able to follow this story, let me tell you. But, the, but other women are seeing this stuff, and they say, oh, it's great. Oh, it's great. Um, okay, uh, let me let me put this last for this story. Uh, that one I really can't talk about on YouTube. I'll I'll leave I'll leave it for on, on on YouTube. I'll leave it with this one, and then we'll do the last two stories over on locals because YouTube gets kind of crazy. Okay, so this is from Ho Math. Uh, if you guys, uh, I think he's on Instagram. Maybe it's TikTok. I'm not sure. I I guess I'm guessing it's Instagram because it's filmed horizontally. But but he, he's kind of taken what a lot of the – and I don't know how old he is, and maybe he's been doing this longer. So I'm not saying that he's taking anyone's information. I, I don't uh, – but he definitely understands the red pill. Maybe he listened to some, some of us when he was younger and said, hey, I'm going to do my own thing with this, which is awesome because the next younger generation needs to carry on the banner of the content. I like what he does. I'm, but I'm not really familiar because I'm not on any of this social media stuff. But any once, every once in a while, his videos float across the way. And while I look at this and I say, we've talked about this before, he puts it in a very short, succinct, and well thought out process using his little drawings. And I think it's, I think it's reaching the maybe the generation or the next group of people that don't like long form content. They want to see a cute video for you know, 30 seconds on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, and then move on about their day. So I do want to give him credit. Um, I, 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 let me, let me just, yeah. So it's H O E underscore M A T H. Um, I, I don't know what social media this was from, but I want to give him credit for this. And I want you to listen because he, he's explaining how women are now, they first start doing the hold my beer. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to have all the fun in the world. And then they hit the exhaustion point, or which we like to call the wall, where they get older and they realize this isn't working, man. Like, I'm, I'm miserable. I'm alone. I'm empty. Dudes just sleep with me. They don't take me on dates anymore. They don't wine and dine me. And, and part of the reason of that is it was because the guys that they're going out with don't need to wine and dine them because they're hot and they're just going to bone them. And the guys that would wine and dine them, they're not interested in, which is kind of funny. But I'll let I'll let him give his his little uh, in, um, input here. Big things are happening. We may be approaching the exhaustion phase of the liberation cycle. This woman may have accidentally discovered morality as a result of her behavior. Let's take a closer look. If we all collectively ignore men, stop dating, stop giving them any time of day, not chatting with men, not flirting with men, not kissing, not being intimate with men. Do you think they will all come around and start doing like courtship and stuff? I would like to see this being done in a trial. Well, well, uh, and he's going to he's going to say this, so I'm not going to be relating anything that but as as Ho Matthew will will point out, yeah, that's what we used to do. It was you were proper. You didn't you didn't befriend like my mom didn't have any male friends back in the I don't know fifties or whenever it was before she met my dad. She didn't hang out with guys. She didn't go drinking with strange men and you know or friends that were. She didn't have guy friends. Men hung out with men. Women hung out with women. And if a man wanted to meet a woman, he went over and he got her number and he ch chatted with her a little bit. Then he took her on a date and then he did relationship things. Now women are like, oh, you're hot. I'll do you. Guy's like, wow, that was an easy button. I don't even have to, I don't even have to treat her well. She just gave it up. I'll let him finish. Good news. We already had a trial. It was called Civilization and it's gone now. You said that you didn't like it because you couldn't be naked outside all the time. And now you can. And I guess you don't like that either since you're being treated as a commodity. This idea that you're expressing, what if we don't just throw ourselves at men all the time, we used to call that gender roles. You said they were oppressive. You wanted to make progress by becoming liberated so you could do whatever you wanted, and it didn't turn out to be much fun for you, which we kind of told you already. That, now, that, that, that last part is, is what's so funny. He's like, we told you this already. 
women, when men say, no, you can't walk around with your damn top off. No, you can't, you know, you, you don't want to be one of these spicy workers. You don't want to do only fools. Uh, you, you, because what you're doing is you're saying to men, uh, give me money for my looks and for my body and for me talking dirty and for me basically, you know, acting the fool. And guys are like, yeah, all right, five bucks a month. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at some of your videos and your photos. And the good looking guys are like, oh, you mean for free? You'll, we'll just hook up on Tinder because you like my photo and you'll come over and let me bang you. And then afterwards, like, that's it. You'll, yeah, you'll want a relationship, but I didn't have to give you anything and I can sleep with you and then ghost you after that. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. And so you're getting what you asked for. You're getting, you're getting what you wanted. And then women, when women get what they want, they realize, oh, well, this isn't working out so well for us. You know, um, not to get too political, but uh, what's her name? Kathy Hochum in New York City. They had the big defund the police. They had the big, uh, oh, you know, police, uh, policing people and throwing them in jail and keeping them in jail and no cash bond and all this other stuff. We need to defund that. We need to find a new way. Now, Kathy Holchul, yes, she's a woman. And I'm sure she, uh, but all the people that were, yes, let's follow our feelings. Let's do whatever we want to and not follow the rules. What happened? Subway uh, crime and everything got so awful in the subway that they had to call in the National Guard. Uh, I think it was the National Guard or the New York, New York's Guard. Maybe it's not national. Maybe it's a, a whatever state agency, uh, the, the reserves. Maybe it's the New York State Reserves. I don't know. But anyway, they had to call in basically reservist military to come in. And now you've got like 10 cops at every subway entrance in New York and some riding on the trains because things got out of control. So you do what feels good without using any logic, and then reality sets in, and things work out the way we all think it's going to work out. And then you have to overreact and say, oh, my God, we've totally broken this. We need to fix it. How do you fix it? Coming right back to the thing that we told you was, was not a good idea to do in the first place. And that's what he's saying, that we said, hey, men strong, women stay at home with the kids, men will work, women, you know, go on dates with men, stop sleeping with everybody, bring your standards down. And women says, no, that's not fair. We're going to do whatever we want. Then they do whatever they want. Then they're not respected. And then they get tired because they're not looked at as beautiful and unique snowflakes and unicorns and wonderful. And then they say, well, wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not getting asked out anymore. Guys just want to bang me. Well, that's what you guys do. And then they say, well, that's it. You know what we're going to do to punish them? We're going to go and make them wait and take us out on dates and treat us kindly and buy us gifts and say they're going to be our boyfriend before we sleep with them. We've been saying that all along. And so this is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant example of the circle of life coming right back to where we've been. We've been the whole time saying, don't do this. Don't do this. You're going to hurt yourself. But women said, hold my beer. Then they do all this craziness. And then they come back and they're like, okay, that didn't work. Yes, we know. These men are having a new girl every day. She means these men, not... Not these. There is no shortage of women giving men a chance. There's a pretty big shortage right here. So if we all just... For those of you just listening, he pointed out the hypergamy, which is the one through 10 women all wanting to be with the eight, nine, and 10 men. And she says there's no shortage of women being with men. Well, not the top, but the bottom men, as he writes on this, not people. And he just writes a ghost, which is... Again, now maybe it might not be an eight. It might be a seven, and for some women, a six. But when a one, when a one or two or three can sleep with a five or a six, the the bottom half is invisible. So he's 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 exactly right as we've always talked about. Big shortage right here. So if we all just don't talk to them, right? We used to make you do that, and there was a whole thing about it. I'm really curious in what, what happened. You don't need to be. We would build stuff and be safe and have families and kids and stuff. Or you could keep saying, give me everything for free and let me do whatever I want all the time and deal with the consequences. It's really up to you. We don't, we don't, we can't make these things happen anymore. So yeah, congratulations on figuring out how civilization works. It is a little bit late though. <laughs> I do like that point. He's pointing to a picture of, of basically crap with flies on it. 
Yeah, it, it is a little bit late. So um, she's finding out. She's finding out what we've said now forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And then they think, oh, you know what? We've got this figured out. We're going to go back to the 1950s. Yeah, congratulations. You went through all that, except the difference is now they're entitled. They work. They can't give up their job. They got body counts. They they can come back to, oh, I want you to take me out and treat me well, and, and um, I'm not just going to sleep with you. That's fine. But depending on the age and how, how late in life you learn this, you may have lost your value already. I mean, looking at her, she's got the, what is it, the septum ring? or she got the bull ring in her nose. Uh, I'm sure she's got the feminist mentality. How far is that going to go? I mean, is she really going to be the stay-at-home mom? No, she's going to be like this first lady over here with the, the part. I have an equal partner, and here's what's going on with that. It's too late. But they're going to come back and claim, oh, poor me. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go through this entirely because this is getting a little long. Mom goes viral after thinking she could have it all. Millennial moms were duped. And she, she's got a video. I'm not going to play it because it's pretty long. But she says, like, I feel like we were lied to. She says, I, I have a husband and I, my husband and I work and we have two kids. I think it's two kids. And I make a hundred grand a year, and my husband makes a hundred grand a year, and and we were told everything would be fine. But when I drop my kids off at daycare, they miss me. My daughter says, like, uh, that she has to kind of talk herself through getting through the day. She just wants to be at home with her mom, and she doesn't want to go to daycare. And this woman's like, oh, we were lied to. We were told we could have it all. And the weird thing is, she said I'd quit, but we'd have to downsize our house. Now, if they have two kids, and obviously it's a husband and wife, that's four people. And she says that on their $200,000 a year income, they'd have to downsize their house. What kind of people are getting into a situation? Because she said she quit, but they can't, they can't afford their lifestyle on $100,000 a year. Now, look, I know things have gotten a lot more expensive, a lot more expensive, but not $100,000 a year, kind of expensive. When I talk about money, people act like I'm, I'm somehow not in touch with the current generation. I'm still looking to buy, buy land for the men's retreat. I'm looking on land. Do you know how much land was when I looked at it? I found four acres on a river slash creek, four acres just outside of Tennessee. They wanted $650,000 for four acres. Empty land, completely undeveloped. I know the price of things today. I know how things are ridiculous right now. But I also know I bought this plot of land two years ago. I bought the metal building I'm sitting in a year ago. I'm having a house built right over here on my property. I know the current prices of things. And I know that... My, like my cousins, my aunt, uncle, and my cousins, which was aunt and uncle, two cousins, four people were living in a mobile home on like two acres of land because they didn't have much money. And it was in rural, like 20 minutes, 30 minutes outside of town. They didn't have a lot of money. And what did they do? They bought a, a mobile home, a single wide, so it was just a trailer. They lived in that. While my my uncle was uh, he was an engineer, uh, electrical engineer, I believe. While he continued to get better jobs and learn, and after the daughters were grown up, and they were adults, old enough to go to school and and be in high school and come home and be left alone, my aunt went out and she got a job as a teacher. Actually, she went to college at that point in time. I don't know. She was like thirty something. That's when she went to college. After the, my two cousins, their daughters, were already like in high school. And so that's when my, my aunt went out and got her college degree. And then she went and got a job as a teacher. And then my aunt and uncle, when they were in their 30s, saved up. That's when they got the, you know, the nice house. They made sacrifices. People today talk like, oh, well, you don't have to make any sacrifices. 
you 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 know your parents never made any sacrifices you didn't make any sacrifices it's only us poor gen x and millennials that man i tell you i've slept in my car i've had three roommates in a two bedroom house i went and bought peanut butter jelly ramen noodles and a gallon of milk and it was like you could say today oh well that's that's 15 bucks today okay well back then it was 7 or 5 still all the money I had, and I would eat on that for a week. Now, if you said, well, that's $20 today. Okay, we'll go buy that, and eat. that's the only thing you eat for a week, $20. And and instead, they're like, no, I got to have my Starbucks coffee, and we got to go out with friends, you know, once a week for mimosas and brunch, and, well, I'm going to have my steak, and I, I can't make sacrifice. Don't talk to me about that stuff. These people are so spoiled. And, and now she says, oh, I've been lied to and we, I can't afford and now I'm stuck. And you're not stuck. Nobody's stuck. Well, very few people are stuck. But they're just not willing to make the sacrifices needed to get ahead in life. And so now she's stuck, stuck working so they can make their 200 grand. They can't sell the house because interest is too high at 7.5% to buy a new home. I got news for you. When I bought my house, what, uh, back in 20, when did I buy my house? 2016? 24. Anyway, uh, oh, no, it might have been even before that. It might have been like 2012. I don't know. I don't pay attention to dates. I'm, I'm getting old. All that stuff doesn't matter. But the point being, when I bought my house, my interest rate was 6%. It was right after the 08 bubble crash and all that stuff, and interest rates went up. I don't remember exactly. And I was a first-time home buyer. And yeah, my interest rate was kind of high because I, I didn't have a ton of cash down. And what did I do? I made the payment. And it was a small house. I wish I'd gotten smaller, but it was a small house. I made it work. People are unwilling to make it work today. And so now they just find excuses for everything. And so all the people that I've highlighted in this whole video today, they're all going to find excuses. They're all going to find excuses. And, and then they're going to blame it on everybody else. Oh, hold my beer. Oh, I made a mistake, but it's your fault. It's men's fault. It's men's expectations. Men want us to do this. Men want us to get lip fillers. Men want us to get the Brazilian butt lifts. Uh, men, men just want to take us out and sleep with us without dating us. It's, it's always men's fault. There's never any accountability with any. And, and even she, she could say, she, she could say, you know something? We made a mistake. We bought too close to a big city. We should have commuted a little bit further. We should have maybe bought something a little smaller, a little less expensive, and then I could have stayed at home with the kids. We Maybe we shouldn't have such a – I mean, if you look at this headrest here, this, look like, this looks like stitched leather. This looks like a stitched leather seat here. Could she could – she, if her car payment's $800 a month for this very fancy thing, could she go and turn it in and buy something used for $20,000 that's, you know, it's had better days, but it'll get her from point A to point B, and then take her payment from $800 a month to $250, $300 a month? She could. Could he do the same? Yep, there you go. You've just saved yourself eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month. People just, they'd rather blame everybody else for the mistakes they make than, than looking in the mirror and going, Whew, I effed up. That's something people don't say anymore. I can't tell you how many times I looked in the mirror and said, Whew, I effed up. I screwed up that job. I screwed up that interview. I screwed up that date. I screwed up, you know, whatever. I screwed up uh, my car. <laughs> and and the more you can look in the mirror and say, man, I screwed that up. I got to learn from this. I got to correct this. I got to... I got to change my view of the world and my perception and make sure that I, I get this right. When you do that, you're still going to make lots of mistakes, but you learn from them. And then ultimately in the end, you can become a wiser, more better rounded, and you make better decisions. And that's when you hear about people that know lots of things or they can do like the farmer, uh, the farmer that knows, you know, he can pick up something off the ground, tell you what kind of worm that is and what crop it's good for and how to fix a tractor and, how to, you know, uh, uh, hot wire something. And he, he, they know all these things around the farm. And you go, wow, that guy's really smart. Well, he, did, he didn't, wasn't born that way. He learned it from his parents. And then he made a lot of mistakes on the way. And then in the end, he goes, okay, 
Here's what I figured out so far. And a good man continues to grow and learn these things up until his last breath on this planet. But these young millennials and Gen Xers, they're 21 and they're like, shut up. I know what I'm talking about. You don't know anything, old man or old lady. I'm going to do it my way. And then when they fail and things don't work out, what do they do? It's boomers' fault. It's the, the boomers' generation. They ruined everything. Maybe the government did. Maybe the, the greedy CEOs and the corporations did. But I guarantee you my, my mom and my dad or my aunt and my uncle, they were just like us. They didn't, have, they didn't change the world. They're just trying to get by. And it wasn't a lot easier for them because they made sacrifices. The difference is these kids today don't make the sacrifices. And they say, oh, you have it easy. Yeah, they got it easy now that they're in their 60s. But they didn't, I didn't have, I'm, you know, you know, in my 50s. I didn't have it easy in my 20s. I struggled more than this lady did in, in my 20s. I was sleeping in that car. You know, She's driving a nice car to work and complaining that she only makes $100,000 a year but can't stay at home with her kids. Until everybody grows the spine and and tends to their wounds of the mistakes they've made, they're forever going to be the hold my beer, watch this generation. And then when finally something bad happens to them, instead of saying, oh man, I screwed that up. I'm not going to do that again. They point at everybody else and say, why didn't you tell me not to do this? Or it's your fault that, th that things happen like this. That's why they'll, they're ultimately going to fail over and over and over. Anybody that has this mindset, whether it's millennial, Gen X, Gen Z, anybody that has this mindset will be a failure their entire life. Yep, you may make 100 grand. Yep, you may have a fancy house and a big car and everything else. But when you have this mindset, any little setback you come across, you're going to point fingers at everybody else. And those other people don't care about you. They're going to say, I don't care that you're struggling. Good luck to you. And then these people, these entitled people get angry and the rest of everybody else that understands how this works, they're going to be fine. They may not have the fanciest stuff in the world, but they'll be just fine because they're willing to make the sacrifices. Guys, uh, if you enjoy my work, make sure to join us over on betterbachelor.locals.com. You can become a, a member for five bucks a month. I stream movies over there, two movies usually. Every Saturday, we share memes. We have some laughs. We have a couple of drinks. Uh, there's no moderation. I'm the only moderator. Um, it's, it's completely off grid. It's a great place to go to hang with like, th I got thousands of other like-minded men over there. Come on over, be a, become a member today. And I appreciate it if you did, and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.